Hello everybody! We are doing a sort of new series here, looking at Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2017. Um, we're calling the series Beneath the Trees because the real name I'd use for this save is going to get YouTube all PO. I should say PO, get PO'd. There. I speak a good English. Uh, sorry, I had a phone call there. So. We're going to hop in and do a, we're going to create a new association. I have one actually of a save of this, but. So the actual save name uh, is going to be called Twin Towers. I do actually have a save of this name, so we'll see if it gets all whiny about it. Our association name will be. The, uh, association name will be in a second when I can remember how to spell. Okay. Beneath the trees. We're starting in 2017. Let me find the actual logo here for the NCAA logo. The game itself doesn't actually come with these logos. You have to download um, a mod off the forums. But once you do, it has all the school logos and it should automatically, if I re. Pardon me. I switch eating. Uh, it should, if I remember correctly, automatically update these like it does it all it has its own little thing it does for that and everything and they do have a different this pack has a few different logos but uh keeps going here yeah because the game because you know they'd have to pay the schools and stuff so they don't want to do that don't i have the ncaa logo in here somewhere oh we're starting off great Oh, it's probably in my association pile. And you see it comes with the conference logos and stuff. I like these kind of bubble logos. There it is. You can find it. Uh, championship tournaments. We're going to have, of course, the NCAA, the NIT, the CBI, and I have to remember what the fourth tier tournament is. And more second. Someday we'll get this right. There's, there's a CIT, I think. There's a CBI and the CIT. I can't remember which one. Is the uh, bigger one. Uh, screw it. We're going to call that the CIT. I don't think that's right, but whatever. I'll get the job done. We just want to get through this. Um, so next thing, when we're creating our game, we choose the mode we can do. There's uh, This is a promotion relegation mode you can do. Which, as it says, uh, basically it will create uh, conferences based on team prestige. Each season teams are promoted or relegated based on previous season results. Kind of like uh, European football or soccer. I say football. I've been ingrained in calling it football now. If you're European and watching this, you can be proud of me for being ingrained. <laughs> ingrained in doing that. Um, we're going to play, play in standard mode because I like playing in standard mode. They stay in the conference. Uh, we are going to allow conference movement. I'm always iffy on that, but I, I think we're going to go and do that. Basically, if a team does really well, they can move into another conference. Blah, 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 blah. Next up is we can import a roster file. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's any real life roster files. Uh, I haven't looked in a long time, but I don't think there are, just because it's so many players you have to edit and mess. I think you can choose between using 1 through 10 ratings or 1 through 100 ratings. I suggest 1 through 10, and the reason is that is because I tried the 1 through 100 ratings on one of my saves, and albeit I haven't gotten to a big, big school yet, they seem kind of wonky. The game, in my experience, is built more for 1 through 10. Like, I'll get really wonky looking numbers, and I'm not sure if it's really working well. Like, I have guys like, I have a guy with 50 defense, and that's like on the high side. I'm not sure if that's the high side in the game, or just my recruiting isn't good enough because I'm not at a huge school. I, I find 1 through 10 seems a lot more balanced, a lot more sensible than the 1 through 100 ratings. Um, we can also use limited ratings. If I knew what that was, I would tell you. <laughs> I've never used it. I don't care about it. It's probably like one of those ones where you just use rates like a couple things and you don't really know otherwise. 
we can set the injury factor, which we can actually change later. We're going to keep it on 100 for right now. There's not a lot of injuries. You could argue it could be higher, but 100 is fine. I usually have one or two players get injured. I haven't had, like, you know, an injury issue. Uh, illegal recruiting is basically we can bribe players, which we will keep on. And if you get caught, your school can get uh, punished. In my other game I have going on right now, we just had three schools get hit with that. Um, one of them was Marquette, which has no scholarship for four years and no postseason for four years. The only downside is it's not as debilitating as you'd expect. Um, Walk-ons are... They originally made walk-ons, so they were god-awful. But they were so god-awful that even at small schools they were god-awful, and it got a little... It, it was a little overboard on how awful they were, so it got kind of changed. So now, big schools, you still get decent walk-ons. And of course, small schools, you get really crappy walk-ons, which isn't a surprise. We can prevent underclassmen declaring if we hate one and done. I hate one and done, but not in this game. I like having them. They don't declare enough, actually. And a lot of times if it feels like if they don't declare as a freshman, unless they're like, it doesn't feel like they're going to declare as a sophomore, or really until they're a senior. I, I had one guy who was, I'm, I'm playing in the Big 12 in my other day, but this guy was Big 12 Player of the Year. He was like third or fourth in Naismith voting. He was like a five-star prospect. He was supposed to be great, you know, two years ago, and he just never, he kind of struggled for a couple years. He may not have really been as good as we thought, but... Nonetheless, in his he, uh, in his junior year, I think it was his junior year was that Brink Bearcat year that he had, and he still didn't leave, which seemed kind of wrong. He would expect more real life wise. Um, that kid would be long gone. I actually got a voicemail from that number that called me. Hmm. We'll look at that in a little bit. Well, you guys want to me look at that? I'll look at that in a little bit. I better make sure I'm on the right thing. If I am, okay. Recruiting difficulty. We can change how easy or hard it is to recruit. Oh, recruit the AI. I'm going to go hard. That's what I have in my last save, and I feel like it works okay. It may still be a little easy, but, you know, it's not ridiculously easy. Normal can be kind of easy once you know what you're doing. Um, of course, easy would be super easy, but... We're going to stick with hard for right now, and... If we feel like it, we may then change that, but... Right now, we're going to stick with hard. Uh, coaching options... We can be fired. I do prefer that. I'm going to turn job pressure to high. Again, I think I'm playing on normal in my other save, and it feels like it might be a little too low at times. Like, for example, the coach of Kansas has, you know, tanked that program, and he's still been there like four years because he did decent four years ago. It's like, okay, yeah, but we're talking about Kansas. I'm K-State, and K-State's doing better than Kansas. So, for like three or four years now, it's a, like... Uh, he probably should have been fired a long time ago. Here we can customize our conference and the teams. This, of course, because we're using that... Pardon me. And in the conference tournaments, you can change as well. Conference type. Actually, I don't have any extra conference types, but... Anyways, yes, the American Athletic is at the end. I don't know why. In the game, it doesn't really affect it because you'll come back to them and you'll see them. But they, come, they stick in order. But why they're on the end of Customized Conference, I don't know. I really don't. It's weird. But it's whatever. Um, and again, because of the mod I'm using, it's all already put in. The conference logo is already adjusted and all that. So it's pretty simple for us. But if you did want to make your own comp make your own setup or something or you know edit the teams from the base game and change them around and stuff you can use this just showing you so you know you can kind of see what all the stuff you can do we're going to go to customize teams same thing here you can change any of the teams cities their states where they play their prestige their how good their facilities are how good their academics are. are. Um, I should rephrase that. They're in... What's the best way to phrase it as? I guess how important academics is to the school. 
uh, scores with the higher academic ratings tend to, from what I've seen, I haven't really played in a lot of them, but they tend to have higher SATs, obviously, scores. Ah, wow, that was bad. Let me rephrase that. They tend to have higher SAT scores required for players to, make, to meet to be able to, to uh, qualify to come to the school, which can affect your recruiting, obviously, because um, we'll get into that later when we go into recruiting. But a lot of times I've seen too, they often have standards uh, or part of your contract is like no academic eligibility. Correct, I say contract. Part of your goals for that season is no academic ineligibility. Which isn't hard to avoid unless you're recruiting really terrible players. And at a high academic school, they're probably going to fail on meeting the required score to get into your school to begin with. So... And it can also affect um, recruits as well. Some recruits do want to go to a high academic school, so it can help you uh, in that factor in getting recruits. Facilities are the same way. Some recruits want hot, really good uh, facilities. Some just don't care. So having great facilities could help you land a recruit potentially. Uh, again, you can change the school colors. You can change the logo. You can change the color of the jerseys. Um, specify if they use an alternative jersey, change the number colors. This mostly will affect if you're playing the games, which I don't really do. But if you do play them, that you'll see the blocks have the different colors and number colors. Uh, there's one team I was going to look at because I think it's broken. This one mentioned they play in the wrong city, but I'm trying to remember who it was. Are they in the MIAC? Uh, Bethel Cookman sign, Delaware State plays in Delaware. Ah, there it is. Uh, North Alabama is set to playing in North Carolina. Fix that real quick. <laughs> That's what I wanted to fix. They're a zero prestige school, obviously, so it's not a big deal, but. Yeah, that's uh, someone pointed that out. That's why I wanted to fix that. <laughs> We got that fixed. Now we can go on to the real important part. Uh, we're going to create our own coach here. And this will be our coach for the save. Uh, for the first name, I am going to use the coach that's in my other save. It was named uh, Diego Talon. It's a um, random name generation, I do believe. There may be some significance to it. A lot of times now I, I have significance in names. So. This is why it's Talon. Talon. I was wondering why that. It is a first name in Turkish, which means tall. Supposedly. It's actually with an A. Like I changed it to an O to make it look, you know, fancy. Why are Diego? But, uh. We're going to look up, uh, how about defense? Uh. Eh, nothing really interesting there. We're gonna stick with Diego. That works fine. Yeah, I changed it to Talon, but it's a uh, it's with an A. In fact, we can actually do that. I don't like really care. Diego Talan. It still works. We can so we can do our name. We can put a photo in if you want. Um, we can pick our dream job, which is basically the school we want to coach eventually. And this save. Where do I want to end up? Usually it's Arizona. But I already have that in my other safe, so. Sometimes I'll just create a random choice, too. I'll say, like, oh, he's a coach from, you know, oh, he's from New England States, or he graduated from such and such school. I thought my phone was looking at me about something else, and kind of go from there. Um, I don't have that right now that I can think of. Or, you know, it's like a school that particularly is like, oh, that school is uh, known for such and such style of play, and that would be the perfect school for a coach. Right now I play at Kansas State, so I don't really want to go to the great... I'd love to be a uh, New England school in the New England area, just because I haven't really actually... Usually I do Big Ten. Big Ten school would be another one, because that's kind of what I think of. Like a Minnesota would be cool. There's no... I kind of like Michigan. Um, there isn't really any other Big Ten schools I really go crazy about. I'm like, oh my god, I love that Big Ten school. I don't really like Ohio State, which I shouldn't be surprised. I kind of like Michigan. 
Oregon's not bad. That's again pack 12 country. And Eagle State would be kind of cool just because it's kind of a smaller school. In a sense, you know, just, just in a smaller conference, I suppose I should say. Um, you know, I do kind of like UConn. Let's go with UConn as a dream job. I don't think of UConn and um, tall, <laughs> tall centers all that much. Or, you know, just big, big guys, twin tower type setup, but. Screw it. We're going to go with that. So, next we can select our ambitions, which basically is how ambitious we are. I don't know if it actually affects your coach that much. Um, when you're hiring assistants, they also have an ambition meter, and that can affect that. Because guys who have very high ambition are more likely going to want to take a full t uh, head coaching job eventually. Or they may not want to resign with you, like if you sign them as a third, uh, as a third assistant. They may then, you know, be like, when you try to renegotiate with them, it's like, no, I want to be a bigger, uh, higher level assistant, and you kind of have to either move them, promote them, and pay them, or just kick them out. But for our coach, I don't know how much effect it actually has, but we are going to set very high ambitions, because we do have ambitions of being the best. Academics are going to be low. Uh, this is just how much you care about academics. Uh, I Again, how much it affects your coach, I'm less sure of. I don't know if it affects your recruiting a lot. It's very possible. I think it does affect your job offers, because obviously Princeton isn't exactly going to be coming and knocking on your door if you don't care about academics. <laughs> They're going to be like, yeah, we want that coach who says that grades don't matter. Yeah, he seems perfect for our Ivy League school. But I'm going to set this on low, because my coach really doesn't care that much. Just don't get, uh, just don't become ineligible. Discipline. This is actually does affect recruits. Some recruits do want high discipline coaches. Some recruits don't. Some recruits' parents want high discipline coaches and have a lot of sway in how they how they think. And we'll get into more of this stuff when we talk about recruiting. But for the meantime, we're just looking at deciding how our coach feels about discipline. Uh, we're gonna do average, or even low as a possibility. We really don't do a whole lot on that either. We'll get reports on like, oh, these guys fought and this happened in practice. And again, we'll go over that. Blah, blah, blah. And most of the time I'm like, whatever. Screw it. Let them go. Unless they're like really, this is like really heinous. And I might come, you know, I start a fight or something. Then I might go call them and be like, yo, knock it off. But for the most part, my coach is like, eh. Integrity. We're going to go high. I don't like to bribe because I just, players and because I just feel it's going to uh, come back and bite us in the ass eventually. So I tend to um, recruit the normal way. It might mean we miss out on recruits, but hey, what can we do? So we're going to go with high integrity again. And this, I believe, is another one of those skills that maybe affects how programs hire you. I think it mostly is one of those things that's for the AI head coaches. The guys who have low integrity are going to uh, be the ones bribing players more and probably get the program screwed over. And the higher guys won't pretty basic and then our temper we can basically be a coach who kind of is chill doesn't really go you know kind of you you kind of sit back and kind of watch it you're not like freaking out you're kind of disciplined in a way i suppose you put it or you can go full on meltdown <laughs> um that would be like bobby knight i guess in a way and what he did you could call her that would be kind of john miller um, actually, humorously enough, we <laughs> were. Uh, I was actually at a U of A game recently, and he's. We're pretty sure. I don't think anyone saw it. And we're too high up, but we're pretty sure from the sound of it that he slammed a clipboard down and broke it. <laughs> so, that sort of temper is what we're looking at in this higher end. Um. Oh, what should we be? I kind of like the idea that he's going to be more of a defense, a slow-paced, you know, big guy recruiting, old-school, triangle-type stuff. He's going to be also a little bit more angry, a little bit more heated. I think my other coach is actually more of a relaxed guy. He's going to just chill. So we're going to go, we'll go with not quite extreme, but we'll go with an 8. He can get pretty, uh, pretty angry. Offensive pace, I kind of told you how this goes, but this is basically our philosophies, and these are settings that actually do change. You can just change them at will, pretty much. 
You can decide, meh, uh, I want to, you can, you know, start off as playing a really slow pace at, say, I don't know, Vermont, since we were looking at them earlier, and then you get promoted to, I don't know, you do a really good job in Vermont and Kansas comes to you, let's say, and you're excited, like, uh, we should pick up the pace so you can up the pace and change the pace on your personnel and blah, 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 blah. But for this, as I said, we are going to play at a three. It goes one to ten, basically, is the way I look at it on the clicks. We're going to play three. We're not going to play super slow, but mm, going to set on a... We don't want to play super slow, but... I said we're going to play on a two or a three. Mm. Let's start with two. We may go up to three. Oh, no. Fuck it. Yeah, we'll stay at three. We don't want to play a super slow pace, but we're going to play more of a deliberate style of play and playing through our bigs, so we kind of want to slow the pace down and run more set plays. Like as it says, you know, how quickly instruct your team to shoot, slower pace, more ball movement, and set plays faster is more shots. We're not going to be really looking to take a ton of shots. We want to run more plays through our bigs, have them kind of a mix of, you know, Using both their big A, using their size to kind of dominate in the low post and let them go to work. And also uh, using them as facilitators out of, you know, double teams or just, you know, facilitating at times, you know, in certain sets and that sort of stuff. Anyways, we're going to be, needless to say, we're not going to be a super fast team. Uh, player preference is basically your preference if you prefer to play younger players or more veterans. Uh, my other coach likes younger players. We're going to go more veterans because we're more of a set-oriented team to begin with. So veterans obviously are going to know our sets better than the freshmen will. Um, again, this is one of those settings I don't know if it has an effect on your coach. I do believe it has an effect on AI coaches, obviously, on who they play. Our coach, as humans, I'm not 100% sure that it really has that much of an effect. Maybe it has a slight effect in recruiting. I don't know. Uh, full court defense. How often do we play the full court press? We do not play the full court press. That's your answer. Defensive intensity. Uh, how how intense defense will we play? Fierce defense is more turnovers, but more fouls. We actually are going to play very intense. Well, not very intense defense, but we're going to go from a 10. We're going to go 8. Actually, no, screw it. We're going to go very intense. We're going to go on a full 10. In my experience, I haven't had much luck getting low defensive intensity to work. It just seems like it it just doesn't work. In my other game, I wanted my coach to be a low defensive intensity guy and more about, you know, you know the, D the Dan Tony guy who's less concerned about our defense and just wants to outscore you. He wants to put up more shots than you. Um... Never really worked. We ended up having to go to Tenacious Defense as well, but we were a little less than this, but I don't know. I just, I just could never get it to work. Uh, offensive Crash Boards. We are going to always. One of the big things of playing with our bigs, we're going to cut that down actually by two, but defense, we're definitely always going to crash. We're going to not go super hard on the offensive boards just to not completely give up breaks, but defense, we definitely want to just crash those boards because... We are, again, building a team around two bigs, the Twin Tower kind of setup. And you could argue then that, well, we don't really need to crash the boards because those two should gobble up all the rebounds. Eh. We want to get the damn ball. Frequency, which we will try to rebound defensively. Setting more of a focused rebounding will increase rebound with lower break, fast break chances. Again, we don't care about fast breaks because we're playing more of a half court set style. So we want to, but we do want to really hit the board so as hard as we can. Uh, I, we may try low boards just out of curiosity to see if it gives our bigs more rebounds compared to the rest of the team. Just again, like I said, curiosity's sake, but more than likely we're going to keep it up on high crash boards for both offense and defense. Uh, player rotation. We're going to go slightly no bench. I'm going to play mostly our starters and have some bench guys. We'll have like one or two guys who maybe get a lot of minutes as sort of our main, you know, our sixth man and then our maybe our main big or something. But for the most part, we, we, we do tend to stick with our starters. Uh, zone defense, I'm actually going to keep right in the middle because I'm going to run about a 50-50 mix of zone and man. I may bump it up to 
fact, uh, I think I am actually. So I'm going to bump it to a 6. I'm going to play 60 40. Um, again, I also just part of it is I want to contrast between my other team, which runs almost no zone. It's just a straight man to man sort of NBA style offense, uh, defense, excuse me. But we want to add some zone in there. I feel like with our bigs, a 2 3 zone may be a useful thing to have. We're going to have kind of a get our, we'll put our one. One of our bigs kind of right there just to be kind of a good shot blocker. And then you have another guy who can kind of help stretch out the, uh, whatever. I lost what I was going on. My turn of thought on that one. All right, so there's our first part of Create a Coach. We got one more. You can also randomize your skills and just save your coach. Uh, you'll see the skills in a second. I don't like to randomize my skills because I like to be in control of it, sort of. I have a randomizer I use, just not that. So what we're going to do here real quick is I've pulled up random.org. This is the random number generator I'll use. And what we're going to do here is generate our stats. But for our skills, excuse me. But first, let's hit our skill button here. So you see we have coach models we can build off. We can build off a rookie coach. And this is kind of like your very first coaching job type guy. And it sets you all at 30, and then you can adjust these down. But your cap is at the... You see points remaining, you basically are capped at how many points you have on this. So we have 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. So we have 150 points we can spread between these on rookie. Amateur, we bump that up another 50. We go to 200 points we can spread between them. Average, you bump that up 15. Pro, you bump it up another 10. And then veteran bumps it up another 10. And elite bumps it up another 10. And of course, then there's my favorite, which is custom. <coughs> wow. Woo, drink some water here. I'm not on face cam, so I can't do the weird thing of drinking water like some people have done. But uh, since, since my throat said it's cracked there, let's drink some water. So custom just gives you 100 points for everything, and you can set it how you want. That's usually what I run off of, because I can. Not that there's no reason we can't use average, because we start really low. Normally, anyways, and then put it over here as well. You can do, you can see um, our maximum potential rookie. We can only go 30, 40, 65, 75, 85 for elite and 100. Maximum, I always keep it custom because I like to set our maximum at random numbers. So, our skills we have awesome offensive concepts, defensive concepts, scouting ability, player development, and recruiting ability. These three are pretty obvious. Scouting ability is your ability to scout Division I players. Not confirmed if it has any effect on recruiting. I tend to, just in case, I have a guy who can scout decently as a recruiter once I get to a high enough level that I can sign those guys. But there's no guarantee no, that I know of official document that scouting actually does affect um, recruiting scouting. What it does do, and your scouting uh, coach does, which we'll get into again later, is the scouting of Division One players, including, I believe, your own. So it helps give you more accurate numbers on different on the other team's players when they do scouting reports, as well as on your own players. And its biggest one is your own players, because it can be interesting. Player development, of course, is your ability to develop your players to their maximum potential. And recruiting ability affects how you how good you are at recruiting of recruiting players to uh, come join your program. Uh, I figure anyone watching this knows this, but if you don't know this, in the NCAA, you recruit players to come to your school and play for you, with, and you offer them usually a forward scholarship. Um, not always, but how it works, and, and very basic. And then, offensive and defensive concepts, my understanding is that that's basically how well you are at teaching your offense and teaching your defense. So a coach that's really good with offensive concepts and defensive concepts will teach your players those concepts at a faster rate than one who sucks at it. And thus your players know your system better and they'll play better depending on how your system's set up, which we'll again get into later. But for now, I may we'll leave it at average for now and we'll see what we generate. Oh, uh, one thing I would suggest... If you do play this game yourself, and it'll probably go on sale again, they were on sale for Black Friday, it'll probably go on for Christmas again, just a note. 
with a new one possibly coming out next year sometime. Probably closer to March. But, going back a minute. If you're playing this self, one suggestion I would do is put your scouting ability at a relatively higher number. And my reasoning for that is it tends to develop the slowest of all your skills. Uh, my current coach and my other save, I've played probably upwards of almost 14 years now. And these are all getting pretty close to his max on the other four skills. His scouting ability is woefully behind the rest of them. So, just my suggestion, scouting ability higher for your current, even if you wanted to, you know, you want to make a coach that's kind of like I like to do, like a coach that's not really good and kind of he develops as he goes along. You know, you start at the bottom and go to the top. The scouting ability you want to keep high. Everything else, they'll get there. Scouting ability, yeah. So, what we're going to do, our coaches, first of all, I've got the thing still up there. So, first of all, our offensive concepts, we're going to run our potentials. Our coach is going to be more of a defensive than offensive coach. So, our offensive concepts is going to be lower than our defensive concepts. How much lower will depend on what the generator likes. He can be as low as 50 and as high as 90. 90 is going to be the max we're going to give him. Let's see what we get. 69. Okay, he's going to be a terrible offensive coach. Uh, I'm going to bump that to 70. So I'm going to cheat a little bit there, I know. Defense. We are going to cap at not 100, but we'll go 97. And the minimum he has to be at least a... I'm going to say an 80. 82. <sighs> it doesn't have to be 82. God damn it. I want it to be higher. Can I cheat? Should I cheat? I know I use a number generator, but... Oh, come on. Okay, I'll take 88. <laughs> I know. I, I'm terrible. I'm going to use a number generator. I'm going to cheat the number generator. Scouting. We're going to start at 60. It can max out at... We're going to say he's a pretty good scout, so we're going to say he can max out at, let's say, 95. And let's see uh, how high we roll that. 70, oh, come on. Really, game? Or, really, generator? Really? 72? Really? Oh, I see how it is. I'll take a 79. This coach is going to suck. No. Uh, yeah, I'll take 79. I know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to put up a number generator. Eh, I don't like any of these numbers. Let's try again. Uh, player development. I want him to be a really good player development guy. So I'm going to set he can be a minimum 80. We're going to go a high of 98. 86, I'll take that. And recruiting, we'll just see. We'll go... Minimum has to be at least a 60. That's an above average recruiter. Maximum, we'll go 90 again and see what we get. 71, alright. I'll live with that. I'll bump it to 72, though. But so There's kind of our coach. He's a great player developer. with great at teaching defensive concepts. Offensive concepts, not so great. Okay, scout. And decent but not amazing recruiter. Uh... I don't know if that fall back to its original number, 6, 9, so. Eh, uh, mm, we'll keep it at 70. I'm trying to decide. I may bump that up to 80, and he'll be kind of a guy who's good at teaching the concepts, and good at developing players, but not a great recruiter. I kind of like, I know, I know, I like using a random number generator, and then I'm screwing with it all, but... Okay, we're going to set that down to 69, and I'm going to bump that up to 81. <laughs> so he's not a great recruiter, but he's great at developing players and teaching them the fundamentals. Using that, we'll then go ahead and take our... Oops, shit, what did I just knock down? There we go. we are develop our currents from that. So we'll say he can go as high as 50 uh, for his current at offense, but he could be as low as 25. 48. Okay. 
I'd like to go lower, but I'll take a 48. Uh, defensively, we're going to do the same thing. 27, uh, I'm going to flip those. Either 27 and a 48. Again, I'm cheating on a, a little bit on my idea of just being complete random, but... Uh, scouting. He's going to have a high... I'm just going to set scouting by itself. It's going to be... At 62. Uh, player development will be the same thing, 25 to 50, 28. We're going to bump that a little bit to uh, 32. But And recruiting can be a max right now of, we're going to say, f not even 40. We're going to say like 35, and the minimum as low as 20. 22, all right, he's going to be a terrible recruiter. Good off, oops. Uh, we'll bump that to 25. The other coach currently. He is good at teaching defense. Good at scouting. He's never really going to top out from, well, above average at scouting, we should say. He's crap at offensive concepts. He's about average defensive concept coach, above average scouter. Um, terrible developer right now and really bad at recruiting. But in the future, he'll be a elite level player development, elite level defensive concept teacher, roughly elite level, slightly below elite level offensive concept guy. Can be again a little bit of uh, a little uh, below elite and you know above average in scouting ability and above average in recruiting. Make his bread and butter from being able to develop players and teach them the uh, concepts that we play. Uh, oh, to mention your ratings. Uh, your assistants also have the same ratings. Your coach's ratings are supposedly are the main factor, and then your assistants add on to that in a sense. They modify it, but these play a big part in how you're due. Like, even if I have a really good recruiting assistant here, I'm probably going to struggle with recruiting until he gets a little bit higher up. But our scouting is going to be good no matter how crap my scouting assistant is, supposedly. Alright. So... We're 38 minutes in. <laughs> I will timestamp these things. Let me close these. Off. Close off that browser. I'll timestamp some of these things, and it actually won't be 30 minutes in. I've got to do a little editing on this, but I will uh, timestamp stuff. So as we go through these settings, you can kind of just uh, skip ahead if you're already at this point. You know this, but let's go ahead and select our coaching job now. Now we know what our coach is going to be like. Let's pick where we want to coach. Now, what I want to do, you can sort this. I will show you the job they'll offer you. You can sort by prestige, so you can see Indiana will let us be their third assistant. Cincinnati will take us as their second. Um, Chattanooga would take us as a head coach. No one really wants to give us a first assistant job, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, the schools that want to give us a head coach. Northern Alabama is the worst school in the place area. Uh, the Edgesville, the SIU Edgesville Cougars. Uh, interestingly enough, I find it hilarious this team has a 3 prestige, and the reason is, in my other save, this team has been like a top 25 team for like a decade. Like, they have huge <laughs> prestige all of a sudden. They just became like the best school in the nation for a while. They have like a bunch of Sweet 16s. They're... It was crazy. They just became major. I don't know what the hell happened with them, but they became great. So that's why I just kind of find it funny how low they are. But see, so we can sort by prestige. Um, you can take an assistant coaching job. They'll usually give you a job of either like scouting, which I guess they ask you questions. I don't do assistants. Can't tell you how assistants work. Don't really do. Them. But you can become an assistant at a school, or you can just do the whole be the whole shebang, be the head coach, which is what I prefer. Uh, this tells us again, as we saw in the original, the facilities, how good their facilities are, and this will affect your recruiting. A school like, for example, Jacksonville could potentially benefit from having great facilities and getting recruits because they may find recruits that are maybe not as interested in Jacksonville as a school but want to go to a school with great facilities. There you go. Jacksonville has something it can kind of advertise itself with. Central Michigan's the same way, but they're a mid-major school, mid-major school. It's like a small school. DePaul's obviously like a major school, I want to say. We're not going to start with any of these schools. What I want to do is also academics, you can see here. And you can see, of course, no, we don't really have the highest academic school that wants to hire us as a C plus. 
And probably a lot of that is because we don't care about academics. Our coach really doesn't care. So as I said, it's not like the Princetons of the world are going to come knocking on our door anytime soon. We could go to Kansas State. <laughs> Set up for my other coaches. Oh, let's go to Kansas State. I'll make my other coach and just put him in there if I did that. No. What I want to do is I want to start at A school with really terrible academics. And you may be asking, but why would you want to go to a school with really... Why would you want a school with really crummy ac academics? I shall tell you. The reason I want a school with really crummy academics is really crummy academic schools have really low SAT standards. And my idea is that we can take advantage of that by holding a scholarship available till after the SAT scores come out, which again we'll get into when those come out, and find these higher ranked players that can't get into a large school because their academics are terrible. But we don't care. Like at my K-State school, we're not even really that great academic. Let me see if I can find, because I know they're helping me a job here. Kansas, Tennessee State. Where are you, Kansas State? Damn it. We're up here, yeah. So like at Kansas State, where I'm coaching right now, they're a C-plus academic school. So I think we require like an 880-ish. Ish. And because of that, we do find every so often a couple of really high-ranked players that get like an 820 or an 800. Not a lot of 800s, but like an 820 or an 840 on their SAT. We can't bring them in. Or commit to us verbally, but they can't send an LOI. Um, and we'll get into that as well. But they'll commit to us, but then they can't make the grades. So they, oop, there they go. And <laughs> the way that, that would be beneficial if, we, if we're playing a school with low academics. We can go recruit those kids and be like, yo, no one else wants you because you don't have the grades. We don't care. Come play for us. Um, the downside is it may make us a school that has a shit ton of transfers out of here. Because obviously they'll come in, we help them get their academics to a decent level so they don't go ineligible, and then they may decide like, oh, I can get into, uh, you know, now that I've played here, I can transfer to Kansas State because I have the grades to get in, you know. They have, they don't need, their SAT scores, they don't need to meet a minimum SAT, they can just transfer into Kansas State. And we lose them. But I'm willing to take that as a, as a risk. Um, I'll also show you here you notice American Athletic has a bunch of C's of the schools that are offering us jobs. C plus at Louisville, but you see a lot of when I was scanning through, I was once looking at this. A lot of these power conference schools, and even our like Atlantic Ten conferences, Big East conference, they have C or C plus academics or higher. Conference USA even, look at a lot of these guys. Are, we have a few D-pluses, and a D-plus in there. Horizon has a D-plus, but... For the most part, Max, a lot of C, C-minuses. Uh, Mountain West has a D-plus, but mostly Cs and C-minuses, but and mostly Cs and Cs-pluses. I uh, keep going. Pac-12, a lot of C-plus academics. Summit, Sunbelt, not really... Yeah, we lost all other schools. But you'll notice that we don't have Southeastern, a couple of them C pluses. We don't have all the schools on here, obviously, but what I remember looking through, most of these schools want, you know, our C plus, maybe a few Cs, a lot of higher ones as well for academics, which means if we're a D, there's a lot of players that just won't be able to go to a better school because there just isn't a better school that meets that they uh, qualify to go into. So again, we can kind of bring them in for at least a, our own sort of uh, version of a one and done. Then come in for a year, and then we'll kick them out. Oh, I got an email. My phone's sitting right by my mouse hand, so every time it vibrates, I feel it, and so that's what distracted me with that more than normal. So we got all our D academics, and we got a few D minuses. D minus is where I really, really want to go to. Our choices, we can go to Delaware State, Alabama State, which is the higher prestige schools, Alabama State, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Texas Southern all have the higher prestigious. I kind of want to go to Delaware State, though. It's in the MEAC. It's iffy, but this, our, uh, of course, we go to a D as well, some of these, which have more MEAC schools in them, like Coppin. 
The reason I want to do Delaware State, though, is like I said, I want to have a coach in the Northeast. My other coach is planning eventually to be more of a West Coast. I like to have a Northeast or maybe like a Midwest team eventually we go to. So why not start for, you know, for that sake of that idea, we can start at Delaware State. Our facilities, the uh, the, the facilities kind of suck. Where Alabama State would be nice because they have good facilities and terrible academics. It's like a perfect medium. Um, they also pay me more money. They also don't suck. But let's try Delaware State, you know? Why not? Why not? We'll take that. And here we go. If we were playing a multiplayer game, we could actually create another coach. Give him a password and all that. Goblin Googly, blah, 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 blah. That's what it says. I see. It even says it there. <laughs> we are. We're going to advance. And wait for it to create our coach. It creates the coaches. The game does not. Pardon me. Pardon me again. The game. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. It does not have real coaches in it. Obviously, the schools aren't even real. A lot of times they aren't even modeled off the real coaches. So you get weird things like which of the state doesn't play exactly like which does state. And um, West Virginia doesn't play exactly like West Virginia, etc. But you can edit that. There is a way if you look, go into... Um, the forums on the mods and in the real life mod actually has a way you can add real coaches in there. Um, you have to have a access program. I don't have one, so I can never figure out how to do it. So I just never have. I haven't tried to see if um, LibreOffice, which is a new one I use, if that has one. I used to use OpenOffice, but it got crashy. So OpenOffice, it never really worked in there. And of course, I don't have Microsoft Office because I'm cheap. All right, let's go ahead and start up, and then we'll call it. You see here we have, of course, our opening emails. We get the welcome to the game. The about our basketball budget, we have 149,000. We have only one scholarship, unfortunately. Our assistant coach salaries come off the top, and the rest we can use for recruiting or activities. You see here, here's our assistant coaches we have right now. They all suck. And they're all in three-year deals. He's about the only one who's decent. And that's not saying a lot. Yeah, they all really, really suck. Go to our school info. You see we have 69000 left for recruiting after our assistant coach costs. Cost. You can see Delaware State has only made the NCAA tournament once. Only won the conference once. Has an all-time record of crap. Made the NIT twice. CBI once. And the CIT never. Uh, and there you go. See our minimum SAT score is 800. Let's go and check out, I think, find someone. They're a D, so they have an 820. D plus 840. D plus 840. Okay. You see, like, North Carolina Aggies have a 960. They have an 860 as a C minus. So you kind of see where we, uh, where we benefit, particularly when we look at a conference like, let's look at the ACC, they're one of the bigger ones. 980, 960, 940, 1000, 1000, 900, 960, 960, 980, 1000, 960, 980, 980, 960, 980. So you see, we can take in kids that are, that want to go to an Atlantic Coast program, but don't have the grades for it. We can bring them in for a year and make ourselves a super team. We'll see if it actually works, but that's the idea. Is that we'll take these kids with really terrible grades and try and bring them in. We'll do a quick look. Here's the roster settings. And actually, I'll come back to that. I don't want to get into too many of these because I want to do a separate video on kind of explaining how these go. Um, the one I will lastly cover, we've just covered league creation here. Do I want to really cover that? No, we'll keep it as here. So we've kind of covered how you create your own coach and how that works. Let me go to our homepage here. As you'll see, as I mentioned, we can change our philosophies at any time. 
We can't change any of these. We can't change our skills. They develop by themselves, so as well go up. Or we can't change our philosophies any time. We want to change our philosophy. So this is sort of how you start off your association. Uh, multiply the game, obviously, you can make multiples. There's a guy who actually does that on a few of these. But there you go. You create your coach. You get offered jobs based on your skill level, which affects your reputation. In our case, we got below average reputation. That's why we're getting some mid-major jobs. And as we develop, we'll get better jobs. As we do better, you know, our reputation goes up. If we make Delaware State into a powerhouse, our reputation will shoot through the roof, and we'll be able to get better jobs. Um, I have an unread email. Oh, we're scheduling notice. That's another thing you do as well. We'll cover that in the next episode. Meantime, I'm going to save this. Here you see I actually have a, had the file was a uh, different name for this. So what I do normally, I'm going to overwrite that save real quick. Oh, you see there's the name of our association up on the top there. This kind of shows our record rank, and this shows our, our team leader stats. You can change this around as you want to, or stat comparison, how we're doing to the rest of the NCAA. Our associate leader for our conference. This is hard to change, really. You get, like, a NCAA to come up, our top 25 ranked teams, next opponents. So what I do for saves, I like to have... I'm going to make just a single save for now. I like to have a save that is at the beginning of the season, and then I have two rolling auto saves. One is the auto save till we reach scheduling. When we reach the scheduling, that say we switch to the other save, and that's our save throughout the season. All of these are again will come across, but and I'll explain stuff more. But and then when we reach the end of the season, I save the at the end of the season. And then go back and say over the other save and use that and use the save that we're using that season until we reach scheduling again. And of course I save at the beginning of the season. Um, the reasons for doing that is just in case we hit any bugs. I don't think there are any really common none of them are common bugs. I think they're very rare bugs, but I think they've happened and I, they may have been fixed by now. But there were some issues before with like recruiting not working, you know, recruiting and not getting to recruit so it gets stuck or something, or you get scheduling where then this team doesn't get a schedule. Like I said, I'm pretty sure most of those have either been fixed or they're so incredibly rare they're not going to happen. But just in case, I like to have the rolling, the uh, separate saves just to make sure if any of that happens, we can then easily recover it. We're going to exit back out to main here. And that will be it for this very long first episode. As I said, I will timestamp everything. If you are watching this now, you already know that. But, anyways. And other than that, we'll come back in the next episode and we'll sort of start looking at all our windows there that we had that I didn't really touch on, but we'll go through all those. We'll possibly start recruiting and I'll kind of explain how this series updates are going to work. But in the meantime, that's all for now and I will catch everyone later.